Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be discussing call of day routing in Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Time of day routing leverages several concepts within the class of control subheading that we have already discussed, calling search spaces and uh, specifically partitions. It also introduces a couple new concepts that we haven't seen yet, which are time periods and time schedules. Before I go any further, I would like to direct your attention as always to the source material that you should be referencing before you do anything like this in a production environment. Uh, this particular article is written by a tech engineer and it is aptly named configured time of the day routing. So this kind of walks through step by step what you need to do. It's not uh, a very uh, elaborate procedure or complicated. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it just may help you if you see it done uh, in a real world step by step environment. So that's what we are going to do. We are back in my test environment and we're going to walk through the scenario that we want to implement. And then we're going to go through and I'm going to show you the configuration steps to actually implement something like this. Okay, so we're going to walk through a quick configuration uh, and scenario here to, uh, to illustrate this concept more clearly. Essentially what we have here is we have George Washington set up for full jabber on my Mac. He has this DN1001. It is in the internal partition right now. It's just a very flat static uh, call flow right now. So somebody would call the PSTN number that's associated with this DN. Uh, it comes into the cube, gets translated in call manager to this 1001 on his phone it'll ring for 20 seconds or whatever we have the uh the the reversion timer or the um i forget what the exact uh yeah the no answer uh, ring no answer duration for 10 seconds if he doesn't answer it goes right to voicemail <clears throat> so the scenario that we are going to create here is i'm going to illustrate how you can within creating another partition and applying a time schedule to that partition you can have essentially another number, like an evil twin sort of thing, of this number, 1001. It'll say that while this time schedule is active, this is why NTP is very important for your uh, cluster. While this time period is active, instead of routing it normally as you would to 1001 and having it ring 10 seconds and go to voicemail, we can send it directly to voicemail without George Washington having to manually um, you know, do some type of manipulation to forward it directly to voicemail. So the uh, this is very useful if you have customers that don't want to be bothered with doing uh, manual forwarding and maybe they mess it up or it's not as um, it's not as important to them uh, of manually forwarding their numbers. So instead, you can just take it out of their hands completely and do some automatic call routing and everybody will be happy. There'll be less screams, less tickets, etc. So we are going to dive right in to the crucial component, which is this partition concept. Right now we have internal. That is what the DN1001 is in. We are going to add a new partition. <clears throat> And we are going to say this is our time schedule partition. And I'm going to save that. So now we have internal and internal one. Internal one is nothing right now. There's nothing in it. It's just a brand new blank slate partition. So to change that, we are going to come up here. And we are going to check out our translation patterns. So right now, this number is uh, kind of irrelevant. This is just a number that my SIP carrier has given me, so I have to translate this into the uh, the DN that you saw, 1001. So to make a copy of this, we will go in, we'll copy it, and we're gonna keep everything the same, except we're going to change this partition now to internal one. So we can have 270612 in two different partitions because logically it's like two different numbers. So that's the whole concept of a partition. Um, and then we are going to, instead of saying that this is going to get translated to 1001, let's send this to, uh, you can send it to anything. You can make believe that it's a, another directory number. You can make believe that it's a PSTN number, etc. because my lab environment, the scope of it is so small. I'm just going to send it to a voicemail, like an IVR general delivery voicemail. It's not really going to work or it's not really set up, but just to illustrate this example, uh, this is where we're going to send it. So we're going to hit save. 
and we're going to go back. And now you can see we have two translation patterns with the same exact uh, entry, but they are in different partitions. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to create time periods and then nest those time periods within a time schedule and apply it to this partition. So here you go in here and you go to here. Here you go into here. That was very helpful. You go into call routing, class of control, time period. Right now, the only time period that I have set up just to kind of facilitate this example is all the time. <clears throat> but you could go in here and get very granular with the time period that you want to start, the time period that you want to end, and then if it's the day of the week or day of the year, uh, etc. So as of right now, I have one time period and it's all the time. It's basically Saturday through Sunday, uh, 00 to 2400. So, and then we go into time schedule and we will see that my time schedule has the selected time period all the time. So this is the time schedule is where you apply multiple time periods. Um, think of the time schedule as similar to the relationship that a calling search space has with a partition. You can go into the calling search space and add partitions, just like you go into a time schedule and add time periods. So I have my time schedule created. It's all the time. It's not applied anywhere yet. So effectively it's not doing anything. We have to go to classic control to our partition and we have to apply it. We're going to say all the time. We're going to hit save. We're going to apply it. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have 270612 internal, which is right to the DN, 270612, which is internal one. And that has the time schedule applied to it. And we are not done yet. We have our trunk that we have to look at. And we have to see for inbound calls what it's calling search space is. It's calling search space right now is internal. So in order to make this work effectively or properly, we have to go into this calling search space of internal. And right now we have to add the internal one. This is where we just put that new translation pattern, which is a crucial part of our time of day routing. And that's not all we have to do now. We, asked, we actually have to change the order, the priority of it. So before it was below this internal one, it's never going to get hit. It's just going to hit internal because it's exact match. It finds the exact match. It routes it to internal. We want our time of day routing to take a place, so we want it to hit the partition with the schedule first. And if it's that schedule is not on, then it'll go to this partition. So that is a crucial takeaway uh, of this video and configuring time of day routing. And that is why I mentioned that the order of, a, of partitions in a calling search space matters when you start doing um, configurations like this. So that is a very crucial concept to understand. <clears throat> so now we have uh, this internal calling search space, which is tied to our trunk. It has internal one, which is the time scheduled applied partition. And we have internal, which is our regular partition. It'll call, a call will come in. It'll hit this partition or this translation pattern, and it'll say, since it's always on, it'll route to our IVR. So let's give it a call real quick and check that out. Hello, Cisco Unity Connection Messaging System. From a touch tone telephone, you may dial an extension at any... Okay, so... I called my PSTN, num PSTN number associated with that extension, and as you can see, it hit the IVR or the 2500 My Voicemail Pilot for my voicemail system. Now, if we come in here and we modify this and we move it down one, now internal is going to get hit first. So we're going to make that call. And as you can see, I've masked my identity, but now we have an anonymous call coming in on our Jabber. So that is where the order of partitions matter. Um, and that is uh, 
very crucial to your understanding of time of day routing. So you'll have a bad day if you have a lot of calling search spaces. I've seen this before where you have a calling search space that has a lot of partitions that are kind of not ambiguously named. You don't really know what they are or all the uh, entries involved with those partitions. So it takes a little trial and error and it takes some understanding and kind of like a, a dedicated organized environment um, to do this properly. But I just wanted to show you uh, a simple example. So that was time of day routing using calling search spaces, partitions, time periods, and time schedules. Obviously, I would uh, still like to point out this guide. It is very helpful. It may explain it. It probably explains it better than I uh, just did. Thank you for joining me. I hope this uh, cleared up some things or maybe it showed you how to um, how to do this in your own environment. Yeah, I would encourage you to spin up a test environment, play around with this, and uh, and see how you can make your life easier in your production environment. That's what everybody wants, right? We want to offload some tasks that we have to manually do to prevent user error and to also create some time uh, for more value-added um, activities that we can do. So that was time of day routing in Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Um, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.